This video will identify the components of a vented, wet, or flooded lead acid cell. If we look at the cells that we see here, this area are the positive and negative plates and the separators. These are the plates of the cell. This is the positive plate. The positive plate is the thickest plate in the cell and its color is deep chocolate brown to black. The plate next to it, which is gray, is a negative plate. And this happens to be an inside negative plate because it has a positive plate on either side of it. At the end of the cell, we have negative plates at each end, and the end negative may be thinner than an inside negative because it only has a positive plate on one side of it. And we can see in this particular cell type, the inside negative plate is thicker than the outside negative plate. These are the separators in the cell. The separators separate the positive and negative plates so they don't come together and don't cause a plate short within the cell. The separators here are a brownish color and you can see that they do separate the positive from the negative plate. They also extend past the positive plate and negative plates on all sides to ensure that the plates don't come together and cause a plate short within the cell. If we look closely at the separator in this cell, we'll see that there's actually a piece of glass fiber mat that's placed between the separator and the positive plate. This is called a retainer mat. Not all cells have retainer mats. However, the job of the retainer mat is to retain the active material in the positive plates. In this area, we have the strap. This is the positive strap, and this is where all the positive plates connect to. It's a bus bar connecting all of the positive plates. Right next to it, the next cell, we see the negative strap. The negative strap is where all the negative plates connect together in the cell. This is a close-up of the negative strap of a cell. We can see that the plates connect to that negative strap via the plate lug, which extends into the strap and is connected to the strap using a lead burn in which a torch and a lead stick are used to connect the strap to the plate lugs, very similar to a soldering operation. The positive plates are similarly connected to the positive strap via their plate lugs by a lead burn. The area above that are the terminals of the cell or the posts of the cell. And then this piece that connects them is called an intercell connector. The intercell connector is copper and it's either lead plated or tin plated. This component right here is the electrolyte withdrawal tube. It's present on some cells to allow specific gravity measurements to be made deeper into the cell to get a more representative reading of specific gravity. And then down at the bottom of the cell, this area is known as the sediment space. And that's where sediment accumulates. Sediment is material that comes off the plates. And an indication of sediment is telling you about something that may have occurred in that cell six or more months ago. When we look at the straps, we can see on these adjacent cells, we see a negative strap. We also see the next cell is a positive and the next cell is a negative. That tells us these cells are connected in series, although we can also see that from the posts themselves. These are the flame arresters in the cell. The job of the flame arrester is to prevent an external spark or flame 
from causing an internal explosion within the cell. The gases exiting the cell, which is 67% hydrogen and 33% oxygen, are diffused through the fused alumina stone such that if they are ignited by an arc or a flame outside the cell and they get sucked into the cell, the fused alumina stone will cool that flame to below the ignition temperature of the gases within the cell. We have now looked at all the components within the cell, except for a few. The ones we haven't discussed at this point are at the bottom of the jar. There is a bridge. It's a plastic bridge. It can be molded into the jar or placed in the jar. And the plates, the negative plates in particular, will rest on that bridge and form the sediment space of the cell. The bridge is down in the area by the sediment space and, as we said, supports the negative plates. In smaller cells, it may also support the positive plates, but in larger cells, the positive plates may be supported by other means. The other thing we haven't discussed is the liquid electrolyte in the cell. And the liquid electrolyte in a lead acid cell is a solution of dilute sulfuric acid in water. So now that we've discussed the other components within the cell, there are a couple of terms that we'd like to talk about. The first is if we look at the combination of the posts of the cell, the straps, the plates, the separators, and if present, the retainers, we call that the element of the cell. And the element of a lead acid cell consists of those components. The other thing, in a lead acid cell, we generally have an odd number of plates so that there will be a negative plate at each end of the element. There are a couple of other items that we'd like to discuss, and those are the seals on the cell. There are two primary seals on the cell. The first seal is the jar to cover seal. That's where the jar and the cover are sealed together, and that prevents electrolyte from exiting the cell through the jar to cover area. The second seal is the post to cover seal. That is in this area where the post penetrates the cover, and that's sealed. In this case, on this particular cell, there's a seal well, and the seal well contains the post to cover seal. Post to cover seals take various forms, but their function is all the same. That is to seal the cell so that electrolyte does not creep up the cell posts.